in trouble, child. No need to show me out. It's not your manners I'm concerned about. We merely pay you the respect we owe. But, Mother, why this hurry? Must you go? I must. This house appalls me. No one in it will pay attention for a single minute. You all break in and chatter on and on. It's like a madhouse with the keeper gone. If you just... Girl, you talk too much, and I'm afraid you're far too saucy for a lady's maid. You butt in everywhere and have your say. But... You boy grow more foolish each day. If you continue on the course on which you started, you'll leave your father broken-hearted. I think that's a little... And you, his dear sister, acting so pure. I know you're not all that shy and demure. Now, mother... You're a poor example for these children, too. Their dear dead mother did better than you. Madam, really, have some respect. You are her brother, sir, and I respect and love you. Yet if I were my son, this lady's good and pious spouse, you would not be welcome in my house. I've spoken bluntly, sir, but it behooves us not to mince words where righteous fervor moves us. Your man Tartuffe is full of holy speeches. And practices precisely what he preaches. He's a fine man and should be listened to. I will not hear him mocked by fools like you. Good God, do you expect me to submit to the tyranny of that harping hypocrite? To hear him talk, and he talks all the time. There's nothing one can do that's not a crime. He rails at everything, your dear Tartuffe. Whatever he reproves deserves reproof. He's trying to save your souls, and all of you must love him as my son, your father, wants you to. Ah, no, Grandmother. I could never take to such a rascal, even for my father's sake. Surely it is a shame and a disgrace to see this man usurp the master's place, to see a beggar who, when he came, had not a shoe or shoestring to his name. Well, mark my words, your souls would fare far better if you obeyed his precepts to the letter. You see him as a saint. I am far less odd. In fact, I see right through him. He's a fraud! You all regard him with distaste and fear, because he tells you what you're loath to hear, condemns your sins, points out your moral flaws, and humbly strives to further heaven's cause. If I'll tell you what I think, if you ask me, he's jealous of my mistress's company. He's not alone, child, in complaining of all your careless entertaining. In all of that, I'm sure there's nothing vicious. But why give people cause to be suspicious? They need no cause. They'll talk in any case with a malicious tongue and a scorning face. Let's strive to live by conscience clear decrees, and let the gossips gossip as they please. By talking up their neighbors' indiscretions, they seek to camouflage their own transgressions. I tell you that you're blessed to have Tartuffe dwelling as my son's guest beneath this roof. Heaven has sent you to forestall its wrath and lead you again to the one true path. Reputations perish thick and fast, as a wise preacher said on Sunday last. Parties are towers of Babylon because the guests all Babylon with never a pause. And then he told a story which I think... I heard that laugh, sir, and I saw that wink. I leave this household much dismayed and vexed. I cannot say when I shall see you next. To avoid her, I'll think I'll stay behind. I want no further pieces of her mind. My, what a scene she's made, and what a din! And how this man Tartuffe has taken her in. Yes, but her son is even worse deceived. His folly must be seen to be believed. Not long ago he played an able part in serving his king with wise and loyal heart. But he's quite lost his senses when, since when he failed. But if Tartuffe's infatuating spell gives him the place of honor when they dine, delights to see him gorging like a swine, stuffs him with desserts till his guts distend, and when he belches cries, God bless you, friend! Tartuffe, much too pleased to find so easy a victim, he's in a hundred ways beguiled and tricked him. Milked him of money with his permission, established a sort of inquisition. In short, there's nothing we can do or say that's not offensive to God in some way. I saw my husband coming. I think I'd best go upstairs now and take a little rest. I'll wait and greet him here. Then I must go. I've really only time to say hello. Ask him about my sister's wedding, please. Tartuffe's opinion is he disagrees. Unless my sister and Valer can marry, my hopes to wed his sister will miscarry. Has all been well these two days I've been gone? How is the family? What's been going on? 
Your wife, two days ago, had a bad fever and a fierce headache which refused to leave her. Ah, and Tartuffe? Tartuffe? Why, he's round and red and bursting with health and excellently fed. Poor fellow. That night, the mistress was unable to eat one bite at the dinner table. Her headache, she said, was simply hellish. Ah, and Tartuffe? He ate his meal with relish and zealously devoured in her presence a leg of mutton in a brace of pheasants. Poor fellow. Her pains and fever made us all nervous. At least we called for the doctor's service. Ah, and Tartuffe? He managed to his bed and fell asleep and snored to wake the dead. Poor fellow. The doctor bled her and the fever fell. And Tartuffe? He bore it very well. Poor fellow. I'll go tell madame that you've expressed keen sympathy and anxious interest. That girl was laughing in your face. And though I've no wish to offend you, even so, I'm bound to say she's had good excuse. How can you possibly be such a goose? You've given him clothing, shelter, food, and care. Why must you also go on your way? Cleon, stop right there. You do not know of the man of whom you speak. I grant you, but my judgment's not so weak that I can't tell by his effect on others. When you meet him, you will be like brothers. There's no loftier soul since time began. He... He can, he ha he's an excellent man. Yes, thanks to him, I'm a changed man indeed. Under his tutelage, my soul's been freed from earthly loves and every human tie. My mother, children, brother, wife could die and I not feel a single moment's pain. That's a fine sentiment, very humane. Oh, had you seen Tartuffe as I first knew him, your heart like mine would have surrendered to him. He used to come to our church each day and humbly kneel nearby and start to pray. He'd draw the eyes of everyone there by the deep fervor of his heartfelt prayer. He'd sigh and weep, moan, shout and cry and kiss the ground, call out to the sky. I gave him gifts, but in his humbleness, he'd beg me every time to give him less. <clears throat> At length, heaven promoted me to take him in to dwell with us and free our souls from sin. He guides our lives and to protect my honor, stays by my wife and keeps an eye upon her. He tells me who she sees and all she does and seems more jealous than I ever was and how austere he is. Why he can detect a mortal sin where you would least expect. Good God, man, have you lost your common sense or is this all some joke at my expense? How can you stand there in all sobriety Brother, your language smacks of impiety. Too, too much free thinking's made your faith unsteady. As I've told you many times already. Being blind, you'd have all others blind as well. The clear-eyed man you'd call an infidel. Those whose hearts are truly pure and lowly don't make a flashy show of being holy. How do you fail to see it, I ask? Is not a face quite different from a mask? Oh, you harbor all the insight of the age. You are one clear mind, our only sage. There's just one insight I would dare to claim. I know true and false are not the same. These calculating souls who offer prayers, not to their maker, but as public wares. These charlatans, I say, whose pilgrim souls proceed by way of heaven toward earthly goals, who weep and pray and swindle and exhort, who preach one thing but practice another sort. And when there's an enemy to defame, they cloak in spite in religion's name. I think you've been dreadfully deluded. Now, brother-in-law, is your speech concluded? Why, yes. Your servant, sir. No, Orgon, wait. There's one more matter. You agreed of late that young Valère might have your daughter's hand. I did. And set the date, I understand. Quite so. You've postponed it, is that true? No doubt. The match no longer pleases you. Who knows? Do you mean to go back on your word? I won't say that. Well, has anything occurred which might entitle you to break your pledge? Perhaps. Why must you hem and haw and hedge? Good day. This looks like Valer's undoing. I'll go warn him that trouble's brewing.
Ah, good. We're safe now, Marion. My child, you're a sweet girl who's amenable and mild, whom I hold dear and think most highly of. I'm deeply grateful, Father, for your love. You know obedience pleases me best. Now, what do you think of Tartuffe, our guest? Weigh your answers carefully. Think, think it through. Oh, I'll say whatever you wish me to. Then say you're fond of him and would rejoice to become his wife. If that be my choice. Well? What? What's this? I... Yes? Forgive me, pray. Did you not hear me? Of whom must I say that I'm fond of him and would rejoice to become his wife, if that be your choice? Tartuffe! Why, I am resolved it shall be true. That's my wish should be enough for you. You can't mean... Yes, Father. Tartuffe shall be allied by marriage to this family, and he be your husband. Is that clear? It's what I have... What are you doing here? Well, based on a rumor I heard going about, based on a misunderstanding, no doubt, that you want Marianne to wed Tartuffe. I left it off, of course, as just a spoof. Well, you'll believe it when the thing is done. Yes, yes, of course. Go on and have your fun. Don't believe a word your father has said. It's all a hoax. See here, young woman. Come, sir, no more jokes. I'm master here, as you must not have forgot. Let's discuss this calmly. Don't be upset. You can't be serious about this plan. Marry a daughter to that frightful man? Why should a man of property like you pick a beggar son-in-law? That will do. Speak of his poverty with reverence. Use only kind words from this moment hence. He lost his wealth caring for heaven, so was careless of his interests below. A man whose spirit spurns this lowly earth ought not to brag of lands of noble birth. Such worldly arrogance and hardly square such meek devotion in the life of prayer. Doesn't it seem to you a trifle grim to give a girl like her to a man like him? There are two so ill-suited. Can't you see what a sad consequence is bound to be? Daughter, trust my judgment. Oh, I'm aware that I once promised you to young Valere. But I hear he gambles, which shocks me greatly. What's more, I have doubts about his orthodoxy. Should he kneel and smear you and make sure he's seen? I can dispense with such remarks, Doreen. Tartuffe, though, is sure of heaven's blessing, and that's the only treasure worth possessing. But should she want fun laughs or other joys? What now? She may go off with other boys! I can't bear, sir, for your honor's sake, to let you make this ludicrous mistake. If you don't hold your tongue, you little shrew. What? Lose your temper, a pious man like you? Yes! You talk and talk. I'm maddened by it. Once and for all, I tell you, be quiet. I'll be quiet, but I'll be thinking hard. Go and think, but you'd better guard. Now, child, I've waited this matter fully. It drives me wild that I can't speak. Tartuffe is no young dandy, but still his person is as sweet as candy. Is such that even if you shouldn't care for his other merits, they'll make a lovely pair. Tartuffe will learn before the wedding days end how quickly a wife can find another friend. What? I'm just talking to myself, late's all. Ah! One more bit of impudence and gall, and I shall give her a slap in the face. Daughter, you shall accept with good grace the husband I've chosen. The wedding day. Why don't you speak? I have nothing to say. In short, dear daughter, I will be obeyed, and you must bow to the sound choice I've made. I'd not with that man, even in jest. Daughter, that maid of yours is such a pest. She's upset me with her insolent talk. I'll calm myself by going for a walk. 
Well, have you lost your tongue, girl? Must I play your part and say the lines you ought to say? What good would it do? The father's power is great. Resist him now or it will be too late. Tell him that one can't love at the father's whim, that you shall marry for yourself, not him, and that if his tartuff is so sublime, he's free to marry him at any time. I've bowed so long to father's strict control, I couldn't oppose him now to save my soul. Marianne, listen to reason, won't you? Valer asked, do you love him or don't you? You know the depth of my affection for him. I've said many times how I adore him. What if Tartuffe? What if your father's plan? I'll kill myself if I'm forced to wed that man. I hadn't thought of that. Well, how splendid. Just die and all your troubles will be ended. If I defied my father, as you suggest, would it not seem unmaidenly at best? Shall I parade my heart's desires and flaunt? I ask nothing of you. Clearly you want to be Madame Tartuffe. I praise the match. Indeed, my dear, the man's a brilliant catch. He's quite a mate that's not to be denied. Twill urge a great party becoming his bride. Dear God! Oh, how triumphant you will feel having caught a husband so ideal. Oh, stop teasing and use your cleverness to get me out of this appalling mess. But the dutiful daughter must obey her father no matter what he may say. Stop torturing me. Doreen, I beg you. No, you were right. This marriage must go through. Doreen! No! Not Tartuffe. You know I think him... Tartuffe's your cup of tea and you shall drink him. I've always told you everything and relied... No, you deserve to be tartuffified. Well, since you mock me and refuse to care, I'll henceforth seek my solace in despair. Don't fret, it won't be hard to discover a plan. Ah, but here's your heart's true lover. Madam, I've just received some wondrous news, regarding which I'd like to hear your views. What news? You're marrying Tartuffe. I find that father does have such a match in mind. Your father, madam, doesn't... Has just this minute said that it's Tartuffe he wishes me to wed. Can he be serious? Oh, indeed he can. He's clearly set his heart upon the plan. And what position do you propose to take, madam? Why, I don't know. Oh, for heaven's sake, you don't know? No. Well, well. Advise me, do. Well, marry the man. That's my advice to you. That's your advice? Really? Absolutely. You couldn't choose more wisely, more astutely. Thanks for the counsel. I'll follow it, of course. I'm glad to see it's caused you no remorse. To give it didn't cause your heart to break. You asked. I answered. Only for your sake. It's for your sake that I take it, sir. Let's see which fool will prove the stubborner. So easy for you. Eyes open, I see. You were never truly in love with me. Alas, you're free to think so if you choose. What choice have I? And here's a bit of news. There's another lady I have in mind whose nature is generous, sweet, and kind. I'm no great loss. I'm sure that she'll transfer your heart quite painlessly from me to her. Am I to yield you to a rival's arms and not console myself with another's charms? Go then. Console yourself. That's the last straw. Madam, farewell. Your wish shall be my law. Splendid. Know this breach is of your making. Yes. You've forced me to this step I'm taking. Of course. Remember that I'm merely following your example. Oh, clearly. So I'm leaving. But wait, what did you just say? Nothing. You're dreaming. Well, I'm on my way. Farewell, madam. Farewell. If you ask me, both of you are as mad as mad can be. Do stop this nonsense. I've only let you go on this long to see where it would get you. Stop! He hates the sight of me. That's plain. I'll go and so deliver her from pain. You're both silly to get overheated. Did you see how Did badly you see I was how treated? badly I was treated? You're both great fools. Her sole desire, Valer, to be yours in marriage. To that I'll swear. 
He loves you only and wants no wife but you, Marianne. I swear on my life. Now, your father has a plan we must stop. Advise us then. What means must we adopt? Pretend to yield to him. Be sweet and docile. They should buy you some time with that old fossil. Then postpone as much as necessary. The day of which you are supposed to get married. But now, let's separate. If they should find us talking here, our plot may be divided. Go to your friends. Tell them what's occurred. And then, have them urge Orgon to keep his word. Meanwhile, we'll stir her brother into action. And get Elmir too to join our faction. Goodbye. Oh, one last word. No time to chat. You'll live by this door and you'll live by that. May lightning strike me even as I speak. May all men call me cowardly and weak if any fear or scruple holds me back from setting things right with this great quack. Now don't give way to violent emotion. Your father's merely talked about this notion. No, I must stop this scoundrel's machinations. I'll go and tell him off. I'm out of patience. Do calm down and be practical. I had rather my mistress dealt with him and with your father. She has some influence with Tartuffe, I've noted. He hangs upon her words and seems most devoted. And may, indeed, be smitten with her charm. Pray heaven it's true, would would do our cause no harm. She sent for him just now to sound him out on this event you're so incensed about. I want to hear this conference, and I will. No, they must be alone. Oh, I'll keep still. You'd start a brawl. No, I won't. It's my right. You're a pain. He's coming. Get out of sight. Hang up my hair shirt, put my scourge in place, and pray, Laurent, for heaven's boundless grace. I'm going to the prison now to share my last few coins with the poor wretches there. Dear God, what affectation. What a fake. You wish to see me? Yes. For mercy's sake, take this handkerchief, and before you speak, cover up that bosom, girl. The flesh is weak. It's strange to see you so easily excited. My desires are not so soon ignited. And if I saw you naked as a beast, not all your hide would tempt me in the least. Girl, speak more modestly. Unless you do, I shall be forced to take my leave of you. Oh no, it is I must who be on my way. It's just one little message I've got to convey. Madam is coming, and begs you, sir, to wait and have a word or two with her. Will she be long? No, that's her step I hear. Ah, here she is now. I'll disappear. May heaven, whose infinite goodness we adore, preserve your body and soul forevermore. I thank you. There's a private matter I'd like to discuss. I'm glad there's no one here to hinder us. I too am glad it floods my heart with bliss to find myself alone with you like this. This won't take long, sir, and I hope you'll be entirely open and honest with me. Indeed, there's nothing I'd rather do than bear my inmost heart and soul to you. They say my husband means to break his word and give his daughter to you. Have you heard? He did once mention it, but I confess I dream of quite a different happiness. I see. You care for nothing here below. Ah, well, my heart's not made of stone, you know. All your desires mount heavenward, I'm sure, in scorn of all that's earthly and impure. Some glory clings to all that heaven's made. In you, all heaven's marvels are displayed. It is, I know, presumptuous on my part to bring this poor offering of my heart. You are my peace, my solace, my salvation. On you depends my bliss or desolation. Your declaration is most gallant, sir, but don't you think it's a bit out of character? It ill becomes a pious man like you. I may be pious, but I'm human too. 
I know such words sound strange coming from me, but I'm no angel, nor was I meant to be. And if you blame my passion, you must needs reproach, as well the charms on which it feeds. These young gallants, whom all the ladies fancy, are vain in speech, in action rash and chancy. When they succeed in love, the world soon knows it. Nothing's granted them, but then they disclose it. Men of my sort, however, love discreetly, and one may trust our reticence completely. My keen concern for you of my name ensures the absolute security of yours. Aren't you afraid I might take a notion to tell my husband of your warm devotion? And that, supposing he were duly told, his feelings towards you might grow rather cold? No, you'll excuse my fierce affection as human weakness, human imperfection. And that, O oh, fairest, you will bear in mind that I'm but flesh and blood and am not blind. I'll tell my husband nothing of what's occurred. If, in return, you'll give your solemn word to advocate as forcefully as you can the marriage of Valère and Marianne. Ah, no, I will not hush up about this vile affair. I saw it all from in that closet. Demi, I've sworn silence. I'll keep my word. To make a scandal would be too absurd. Too long he's meddled in my father's affairs, thwarting my marriage hopes and poor Valère's. Say whatever you will, I'll not consent to lose the sweet revenge on which I'm bent. Father, <clears throat> I'm glad you're here. Let us advise you of some fresh news which doubtless will surprise you. I surprised Artouf with your wife and heard his whole adulterous offer. Every word. To a mile is she to report his lechery. But if I don't, I'm guilty of treachery. And I'll hold that one's husband's peace of mind should not be spoiled by a tattle of this kind. But can this dreadful thing I hear be true? Yes, brother, I am a wicked man, I fear. A wretched sinner, all depraved and twisted. The greatest villain that has ever existed. Believe what you are told and drive Tartuffe like some base criminal from beneath your roof. Oh, you deceitful boy. How dare you try to stain his purity with such a foul lie. What? Are you taken in by such a bluff? Did you not hear what I did? Enough, you rogue, enough. Brother, let him speak. You're being unjust. Believe his story. He deserves your trust. Yes, my son, speak out now. Call me the chief of sinners, a wretch, a murderer, a thief. I'll kneel here while you pour names on my head as a just punishment for the life I've led. Enough, dear brother. Does he trick you still? Uh, just one more word out of you and I'll thrash you until... I'd rather be tortured at the stake than to see him bear one scratch for my poor sake. And that's true charity. What? I, villain, be still. I know your true motives. You wish him ill, employing every shameful trick you can to alienate me from this saintly man. The more you seek to drive him away, the more I'll do to keep him without delay. I'll spite this household and confound its pride by giving him my daughter as his bride. I shall defy you all and make it clear that I'm the one that gives orders here. I disinherit you. An empty purse is all you'll get from me, except my curse. How he blasphemed your goodness. What a son. Forgive him, Lord, as I've already done. You can't know how it hurts when someone tries to tarnish my image in my brother's eyes. Such horror grips at my heart. I gasp for breath, and I cannot speak, and I feel myself near death. Why did I spare him? Why did I not break him into little pieces on the spot? I've much upset your household, and I perceive that the best thing will be for me to leave. No, brother. What, what are you saying? They're all against me here. They'd have you think me false and insincere. And charges which you now repudiate, you may find credible at a later date. 
Brother, never. Brother, a wife can sway her husband's mind in many a subtle way. No, I'll not allow it. You shall remain. It will mean much martyrdom and pain. Ah! There's one precaution I feel bound to take. I'll avoid your wife. For pity's sake, it pleases me to vex them, and for spite, I'll have them see you with her day and night. What's more, I'm going to drive them to despair by making you my only son and heir. This very day, I'll give to you alone a clear deed and title to everything I own. Will you accept my offer, dearest son? In all things, let the will of heaven be done. Poor fellow, come, we'll draw up the deed, then let them burst with disappointed greed. I'm glad to see you, and I'll give my view of this sad matter in a word or two. As for who's guilty that I shan't discuss, let's say it was Demi who caused the fuss. Should not a Christian forgive, and not he not stifle every vengeful thought? Should you stand by and watch a father make his only son in exile for your sake? No, sacrifice your wrath to God above, and help Demi regain his father's love. After his conduct so extreme and vicious, any further contact would look suspicious. God knows what people would think. They describe my generosity as a sort of bribe. Why put yourself in charge of heaven's cause? Does heaven need our help to enforce its laws? Leave vengeance to the Lord, sir. While we live, our duty is not to punish, but to forgive. So let me stress that I have forgiven Demi and thus obeyed the laws of heaven. But I am not commanded by the Bible to live with one who smears my name with libel. Were you commanded to indulge the whim of poor Oregon and, and to encourage him in suddenly transferring to your name a large estate to which you have no claim? If I have resigned myself to taking the gift of my brother insists on making, I do so only as he well understands, lest so much wealth fall into wicked hands. Would it not be the decent thing to beat a generous and honorable retreat rather than let the son of this house be sent for your convenience into banishment? I have certain pious duties to attend to. I hope my prompt departure won't offend you. Damn. Her father's plan to marry her off tonight has put Marianne in a desperate plight. I hear him coming. Let's stand together now and see if we can't change his mind somehow about this match we all deplore and fear. I'm glad to find you all assembled here. This contract, child, contains your happiness, and what it says I think your heart can guess. If my sweet hope must perish, if you refuse to give me to the one I've dared to choose, spare me at least, I beg you, I implore, the pain of wedding one whom I abhor, Love and support him, give him your property, and if that's not enough, take mine from me. The more you loathe this man and dread him, the more ennobling it will be to wed him. But why must she- Be still, speak when you're spoken to, not one more bit of impudence from you. If I may offer a word of counsel here, I think it's best- Counseling you have no peer. All your advice is strong, sound, and clever. I don't propose to follow it, however. You are indeed bewitched to take no warning from our account of what occurred this morning. Madam, I know a few plain facts, and one is that you're partial to our rascal son. So when he sought to make Tartuffe the victim of a base lie, you dared not contradict him. But you underplayed your part, my pet. You should have looked more angry, more upset. When men make overtures, must you reply with righteous anger and a battle cry? Would it, I wonder, carry weight with you if I could show you that our tale was true? Show me? Suppose that from some hiding place in here you learn the whole sad truth by eye and ear. It can't be true. You've too long been deceived, and I'm quite tired of being disbelieved. I'll take that challenge. Now do your utmost. We'll see how you make good of your empty boast. Send him to me. Please, leave us for a bit. 
Pull up this table and get under it. It's essential that you be well hidden. Why there? Oh, just do as you are bidden. Take care that you're neither seen nor heard. Fine, I'll indulge you since I gave my word to see you through this infantile charade. Once it's over, you'll be glad you played. One I'm going to act quite strangely now, and you must not be shocked at anything I do. Whatever I may say, you must excuse as part of the deceit I'm forced to use. Since it's for your sake and for his destruction that I shall seem to yield to his seduction. I'll gladly stop whenever you decide that all your doubts are fully satisfied. Don't expose me to his odious lust one more moment than you think you must. Remember to save me from my plight whenever- He's coming! Get out of sight! You wish to have a word with me, I'm told. Yes, I have a little secret to unfold. Before I speak, however, it would be wise to close that door and look out for spies. I tried to make that troublesome Demi control his hot temper and leave us be. In my confusion, I didn't have the sense simply to contradict his evidence. The storm, though, has bettered your position. My husband doesn't have the least suspicion. And now my heart, perhaps too quickly to yield, feels free to let its passion be revealed. Madam, I am confused. Not long ago, you spoke in quite a different style, you know. When I tried to force you to undo the marriage plans my husband has in view, what did my urgent pleading signify, if not that I admired you, and that I deplored the thought that someone else might own part of the heart I wished for mine alone? To please you is my joy, my only goal. Your love is the restorer of my soul. And yet I must beg leave now to confess some lingering doubts as to my happiness. Might this not be a trick? Might not the catch be that you wish me to break off the match with Marianne, and so have feigned to love me? I shan't quite trust your fond opinion of me until the feelings you expressed so sweetly are demonstrated somewhat more concretely. <laughs> Why be in such a hurry? Must my heart exhaust its bounty at the very start? I shan't believe it, madam, until I save us some palpable assurance of your favor. Is it right to press me with stern insistence of which the feeling weaken my resistance? How can I consent without offense to heaven, towards which you feel such reverence? If heaven is all that holds you back, don't worry. I can remove that hindrance in a hurry. Some joys, it's true, are wrong in heaven's eyes. Yet heaven is not averse to compromise. <coughs> Your cough is bad. A cold. It won't go away. Oh, how aggravating. Oh, more than I can say. No one shall know our joys, save us alone. And there's no evil till the act is known. It's the scandal which makes it an offense. So it's no sin to sin in confidence. <coughs> since you are so determined on it, since you will not allow mere language to convince you, and since you ask for concrete evidence, I see no other means now but to comply. If this is sinful, if I'm wrong to do it, so much worse for him that drove me to it. Open the door a little and peek out. I wouldn't want my husband poking about. Why worry about the man? Each day he grows more gullible. One can lead him by the nose. Nevertheless, do step out for a minute into the hall and see that no one's in it. That man's a monster, I must admit. I'm simply stunned. I can't get over it. What? Coming out so soon? How premature! Get back in hiding. Wait till you're sure. Hell never harbored anything so vicious. Don't be hasty. Try to be judicious. Wait and be certain that there's no mistake. Don't jump to conclusions, for heaven's sake. 
Madam, all things have worked to perfection. The neighboring rooms have had my inspection. No one's about, and now I may at last be alone with you. Hold on, my dear fellow, not so fast. I should advise a little more restraint. Well, so you thought you'd fool me, my dear saint. How you wearied of the saintly life, wedding my daughter, coveting my wife. What I intended. That seems fairly clear. Spare me your falsehoods and get out of here. No. I'm the master and you're the one to go. This house belongs to me. I'll have you know and I shall show you that you can't hurt me by this contemptible conspiracy. You've offended heaven. I'll make you grieve that you ever dared order me to leave. Dear God, I fear I understood his drift. I'm much disturbed about this deed of gift. You mean you gave him our... Yes, it's all been drawn and signed. Oh, how could I have ever been so blind? With the deed in his hands, what might he do? I refuse to believe that we are through. I took in a hungry beggar, and then, enough by God, I'm through with pious men. Henceforth, I'll hate the whole false brotherhood and persecute them worse than Satan could. Come, just because one rascal made you swallow a show of zeal, which turned out to be hollow, shall you conclude that all men are liars and will be condemned to Hades' own fires? It's best to err if err. One must, as you have done, on the side of trust. Father, I heard that you've seen the light, but we find ourselves in a different plight. It's true, my boy. I'm too distressed to cry. I'll rejoice when he leaves with a black eye. Do learn to moderate your fits of rage. In this just kingdom, this enlightened age, one does not settle things with violence. I'm hearing tales of very strange events. Yes, strange events which these two eyes beheld. The man's ingratitude is unparalleled. He aims to drive me homeless, a ruined man, and make me end a pauper as he began. Poor fellow. No, no, the righteous always were maligned. Speak clearly, mother. Say what's on your mind. Virtue in this world is hated ever. Malicious men may die, but malice never. No doubt that's true, but how does it apply? They turned you against him with a clever lie. I've told you I was there and I saw it. Ah, uh, slenders will stop at nothing, son. I saw. You understand? Must I shout into your ears before you'll cease to doubt it? Appearances deceive, my son, my dear. Was I to see his pawning of Elmir as an act of faith? The benefit of the doubt. You should have waited to see how things turned out. You vex me so. If you weren't my mother, I'd say you some bad thing or other. It's your turn now not to be listened to. You'd not trust us now. She won't trust you. What is that man looking for? Who is he? Talk to him and tell him that I'm busy. Good day, dear sister. Kindly let me see your master. He's in fault with company and cannot be disturbed just now, I fear. Important news is what has brought me here. Your name? Just say that I bring greetings from Monsieur Tartuffe, on whose behalf I've come. Sir, he is a gracious man, and he declares urgent news from Tartuffe, which he now bears. Perhaps he has some settlement to suggest. Control your anger and behave your best. Good health to you, sir. His pleasantry confirms my guess that he is here to offer terms. I'm here, sir, if you will permit the liberty to serve you with this writ. To what? Now, please, sir, let's have no friction. It's nothing but an order of eviction. This house, sir, from the cellar to the roof, belongs now to the good Monsieur Tartuffe. But it can't Not be- Not for a million, sir, would you rebel against authority. I know that well. I love all men of upright character, and when I agreed to deliver these papers, sir, it was your feelings I had in mind. I couldn't bear to see the case assigned to someone else who might esteem you less and so subject you to unpleasantness. What's more unpleasant than to tell a man to leave his house and home? You'd like a short reprieve? If you desire, sir, I shall 
not press you, but wait till tomorrow to dispossess you. Enough, enough, sir. This must not go on. Give me that paper, please, and then be gone. Well, au revoir. God give you good cheer. May God confound you and he who sent you here. Now, mother, was I right or not? This writ should change your notion of Tartuffe a bit. Do you perceive his villainy at last? I'm thunderstruck. I'm utterly aghast. Oh, come be fair. You mustn't take offense at this new proof of his benevolence. He kindly has arranged your liberation from all that might endanger your salvation. Go tell the world of the low trick he's tried, the deed of gift surely nullified by such behavior, and public rage will not permit the wretch to carry out his plant blot. Sir, though I hate to bring you more bad news, such is the danger that I cannot choose. That scoundrel who's imposed upon you so denounced you to the king an hour ago. So there's a warrant out for your arrest. Tartuffe is leading them to your address. That man, I say, is a vicious beast. Quick, sir, we mustn't tarry in the least. Let's lose no time, or you shall be undone. The sole defense in this case is to run. Alas, dear boy, I wish I could show you my gratitude for everything I owe you. Farewell, my dears. Please be... Brother, hurry. We shall take care of things. You needn't worry. Gently, sir. Gently. Stay right where you are. You're off to new lodgings. The prison's not far. This means my total ruin and defeat. At last, your villainy is complete. You needn't try to provoke me. It's no use. Those who serve heaven must expect abuse. You are most patient, sweet, and blameless. How he exploits the name of heaven. It's shameless. Your taunts and mockeries are all for naught. To do my duty is my only thought. Your love of duty is meritorious, and what you've done is just shy of glorious. I've rescued you when you were destitute. Have you forgotten that, you thankless brute? No, no, I well remember everything. But my first duty is to serve my king. That obligation is so paramount that other claims beside it do not count. Why was this zeal not roused until you sought to make Orgon a cuckold and been caught? Why weren't you moved to give evidence until you outraged host had driven you hence? Spare me this clamor. It's growing shrill. Please carry out your orders, if you will. You will have to join the other boarders in the king's prison, according to his orders. Aye, sir. Yes. To prison? This can't be true. I own explanation, but not to you. Sir, all is well. Rest easy and be grateful. We serve a king to whom all sham is hateful. The king soon recognized Tartuffe as one, notorious by another name, who done so many vicious crimes that one could fill ten volumes with them and be writing still. The king, by royal order, invalidates the deed which gave this rascal your estates. By this decree, our king rewards you for your loyal deeds in the late civil war. He prizes merit, and always he makes more of one's virtues than of one's mistakes. We're safe! I can't believe the danger's past. Now you see... Leave the wretch his saddened fate, and don't say anything to aggravate his present woes, but rather hope that he will soon embrace an honest piety. Meanwhile, I'd go kneel before your sovereign's throne and thank him for the mercies he has shown. Well said. When that great duty has been done, we'll turn with pleasure to a second one and give Valere, whose love has proven so true, the wedded happiness which is his due. 